łudzinika. What's up guys? It's Tasteless and Valdez here for another day of Pro League 2016. I love that picture, man. Every That's time right. I see it, it reminds us of Every, how good looking we That's are. That's right. Every time I see it, my confidence <laughs> definitely goes up. Yeah, man. We've got two very exciting matches today. It will be best of five for both of our matches. It is already preset as far as who plays who, but if we do go to the fifth game, which is the ace match, each team will get to pick out their uh, viewed MVP player in an attempt mm -hmm. to close us out with a victory. First matchup is going to be Jenner versus KT Rolster. We got Maru versus Losira coming up first. That's a pretty exciting match, man. Uh, I'm not sure if we've seen Losira yet in Pro League. I don't. Th I don't believe we have. But uh, Maru, you know, as good as always, he's won his one match. Really excited to see what he could bring to the table today. Yeah, Maro's looking very good. Uh, still definitely a solid player. We also have TY today as well, somebody who's really wowed everybody uh, with just incredible builds, incredible execution, coming in as Terran into Legacy of the Void and looking unstoppable. Yeah, man, this is going to be a really interesting match of these two teams. Two really strong teams from last year. They have pretty much retained a lot of their great uh, players. They've added some new ones and I don't know, I think this really could go either way. If I had to choose one, I'd say KT, maybe with the 3-1. That's what my predictions at least said. Sure. I don't know what, you, what you're thinking, Tasis, on this one. Um, I don't remember my exact results. Remember, let me see this real quick here. I sure predicted uh, Mara wins game one, SOS game two, TY game three, and Rogue game four. Mm. So you're going with Jyn Air, actually, 3-1. Yeah, I was going 3-1 Jyn Air. Wanted to make sure I was right well, about that. I can't I argue with you. Directly contradicted uh, you on, on camera there. <laughs> um, you're uh, you're on track to get that Nostradamus award. You're you're on top right. of the uh, the foreign predictions right uh, now. So <laughs> far, so good. Uh, I think we're going to yeah. show that in a little bit here, but I'm sure in a, in good time I will fall off. I've gotten pretty lucky well, with some I mean, of those. You, you had a fantastic week last week. I did. So you're doing pretty Don't well. Don't stop. Tasteless. Don't tell me how great I am. Don't stop right you're now. You're only on track to defeat Tehan, who's That's the real right. Notre Dame. He's going down. Don't you worry. Here's our um, ranking so far. As you can see, not surprisingly, SK Telecom currently ranked one. Now, something I would say uh, should surprise most people, the Afrika Freaks are ranked two. Yeah, they're up there. I mean, they played one extra game, so we have to wait and see uh, what the other teams are going to do here. But uh, going into today's matchup, as we said before, Jyn Air versus KT Rolster. And uh, every single matchup here is going to be close, I would say. Rogue, I think so. Rogue has been yeah. having some trouble in recent times. He really didn't show up at GSL. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm still hoping that he's going to uh, pull through here. But yeah, when I casted him in Code S, oh. Yeah, I, I think it was just like bad. an off day. It, it, it seemed like it. It didn't look like Rogue at all. I was watching those matches, man. They were. I mean, not to say too much about Rogue, but he just did not have his well, day. Well, it was day. not the Rogue that I'm used to casting, yeah. or I'm sure everybody at home is used to watching. So uh, I'm chalking that up to, you know, everybody has a bad day. We'll see, though. I hope this is not something that's going to be consistent throughout the rest of this year here uh, for Legacy of the Void. Yeah, I hope so, man. Well, we're going to get into this match in just a bit. Match number one here. Now, you were talking about Maru, you predicted him. I think a lot of us predicted Maru. Uh, he's had some trouble with his injuries, his shoulders, his wrists have been having some problems at the end of last year. But I think he's had some time to rest, get back into the, the thick of things here. Yeah, let's let's see uh, let's see how he does. Uh, Lucira is somebody who has been with us since the very early days of the start of GSL. Fantastic Zerg player. Uh, Sometimes he's very solid. Sometimes he is a little bit rocky, but could still come out with a win. Uh, this time around, I'm 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 saying Maru is the favorite, but um, who knows? Yeah, uh, Lucira's. I, I've kind of marked him as somewhat inconsistent. Sometimes he'll come out sure. and uh, you know 3-0 in a ZVZ. I think he did that against Dark one time, and then he'll come out in Pro League and lose to like Seed. And I'm like, what's going on with this guy? Right. You know? Yeah. Why? You know. Where is he as as a player? But he's now joined KT Rolster, so uh, I think he'll become a lot more solid and more dependable as a player for sure. Well, definitely joining a team like KT cannot hurt. Mm. And as you can see here, 
So far, we've predicted uh, across the board, all the casters here, and I'm sure you guys at home as well, that Maru should, by all measure, come out on top. However, best of one on any on any given uh, mm -hmm. any given day of Pro League. Yeah. You know, a cheese can't take you out, so Lucera might have a trick up his sleeve. Swear to God, Lucera just looks eviler and eviler every time I see him. He's giving you know Maru the death stare through the monitor. I'm getting <laughs> really scared, Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> all right, guys, we're ready for game number one. Pro League 2016. To our game over here in the green. He is Maru. And his opponent down here in the bottom left in the red, it is Lucira. Given that death stare, always uh, one of the most focused pro gamers that I've ever seen. It's so funny because, you know, I've been, uh, I think I'm getting close to, how long have I cast at StarCraft 2 for? When did the beta come Starcraft out? StarCraft 2? Be beta, beta came out six years ago, right? But it, the game was 2010, yeah. And so, um, but I think the actual StarCraft II release with tournaments and all uh, was uh, somewhere in it later on there. But uh -huh. uh, I've been casting Lucera since the get-go. And it's so weird for me because when I first would hear him talking backstage or see him at overseas events, yeah. uh, he just had a younger voice, like the voice of a younger man, uh -huh. right? And now when he comes inside uh, the studio, <laughs> he's got oh, yeah. this, this really deep, resonating voice oh, yeah. where he says hello to everybody. And I'm always like, who is that? And then I'm like, oh, my God. I'm glad you mentioned that. He is actually. so much older now. He really has yeah. uh, a groan. He's He's got that caster voice, you know? Maybe he's got a career in the future here. Yeah, he could. Why not, man? He's uh, He walks in the room, and all of a sudden, it's like... But seriously, he has, he has this big, booming voice yeah. that fills like, up. Onyoseo. Onyoseo. <laughs> um, so it's kind of funny to see these guys grow up. And, you know, um, T.Y., who was baby before, yeah. I was watching him. He was just like a little, little he guy. He really was a baby. Maru as well. And uh, I'm seeing them turn into young men, so it's pretty cool to see these guys yeah, uh, well. not just evolve as players, but develop as people as well. So we got Maru down here going for Reaper opening, followed up with a command center. And um, about as generic as you can get for Zerg, since Zerg is, no matter what iteration of the game, basically going to do the same looking opener yeah. as getting a hatch in a spawning pool. He puts his hatch outside. I guess he just wants that free third hatch in the back door. The thing uh, is, I mean, the free one's really in the very, very back. This one's actually yeah. one where you got to defend it. Yeah, so... I guess he's supposing that Maru's not going to go for any kind of early big rush here, or at least has confidence that he should be able to defend any kind of pressure from Maru. Yeah, well, you know, if you do take this base in the front, you always get the base in the back. And Terran uh, have a harder time yeah. telling when you got that, unless they're going to you know, send one scan out on that. Let's see if he can get the interception here. He's trying to go for it. The Reaper just goes up the ramp, does a bit of damage. Looks like Lucier is just going to wait for the Queen to pop out, which it does. Continue. Uh, ooh, loses a Zergling there. Yeah, good job. I think it was uh, one small note is that it was really smart. He went up the ramp instead of hopping up. It's easier to avoid getting trapped by Lings. Yeah. Uh, in moments like that, since the Reaper can always outrun the Lings as long as it doesn't have to deal with the animation of uh, leaping off yeah. of the high ground onto the low ground again. Yeah, that's true. And look at this. Like we were saying, he takes that third backdoor base, but Maru has no idea. Uh, if Losir was taking the outside third base, he'd have his Reaper in position to even do a bit of damage to the drone as it comes down. You would have to escort sure. that drone down. And, and you, know, you know what's uh, interesting about this is that that can lead uh, occasionally Terrence to think that you're doing a two base all in, right? Yeah. If you don't see the third back there, you can't get confirmation. Whereas Terrence can always scout early on and see that back base there and then poke in with the Reaper uh, and or Hellions into the front yeah. and then check later. So it's a smart way to play if, as long as you can hold it because it does create some ambiguity in the mind of the Terran as to how the Zerg is going to be playing this out for the next few actually quite impactful minutes. Yeah. So we do have Zergling speed finishing up here. The Reaper actually somehow still gets up, but the speed should be able to stop him. We'll see what kind of scouting he gets down. So he's no lair, so you can probably assume that there is a third base coming up here. Okay, Terran is gearing up now uh, with the Stim making Metavax. Uh, we've seen this style of play. It, it's pretty common now with Terran to do 
uh, this teching up. I am wondering if he's going to go for any factories here. Uh, excuse me, tanks rather, not mm. factories. We know he's going to have factories. <laughs> um, but I I'm wondering if we're going to see if he's New actually going to out of the barracks now. That's right, man. <laughs> out of the reactor. That sounds pretty fair. Uh, no, but I mean, I, I am wondering if he's going to go for the tank style of play. Uh, we have seen some Terran players not opt to push around uh, with tanks. Instead, keep it more heart of the swarm with uh, just Widowmine uh, Marine. Yeah, he's going to try to go for a Hellion drop here into the main. Zerglings are waiting. And so he's going to try to drop down here on the low ground, but no dice just yet, no damage. Just going to continue putting pressure yeah, onto Lucera. Nicely done there. Um, you know, just keeping him zoned out. And we see the double Evo chamber as Lucera's, uh, you know, more confident now that he can go into a later part of the game. Uh, yeah. It looks like he wants to try to drop in on this side over here. Let's see if the Lings are coming here for a possible surround. Well, that was a nice little hit. They're going to get three drones, gets the surround, but all the Hellions do get away, forces a big pull. I mean, he found a, a hole in the defense there, so not bad. Yeah, as, as long as he's not losing the Hellions or the Metabag, anything he gets is, is you yeah. know, better than nothing, right? Uh, I do also like the you know, Viking play. We've seen this commonly followed up after the medevac to drive out all the overlords to make medevac stronger later on. Yeah, it's really cool. He's got these four Hellions now on the ground. He's going to be content to trade here a bit against the Queen, but the science to lift off. I, I like the way that Lucir is playing so far. Very safe. Yeah. He's getting the Bailing Nest very early just in case any kind of infantry push came out. He's getting the Lair a bit later, starts his upgrades first. And he's going to have all the necessary defense here against anything that Maru could have done. You know, the fourth base is something you definitely can uh, get fairly easily uh, with Zerg, but holding it can be tougher because of the high ground behind yeah. on um, you know where that fourth base is. That's oftentimes a focal point for where Terran pushes. Some Zergs actually prefer to take the center left. I'm not sure if it's going to be the case this mm. time around. Um, also important to know, in even supplies right now, we have uh, Maru actually going in here for the push. And I'm not sure if he's going to go all the way in or just try to deal, uh, delay the creep, but this is definitely something Zerg might have to deal with, losing a little bit of footing here. Yeah, going to have to reestablish that creep, but I think he should be fine as long as he's on three bases. He's very well prepared. He's got a lot of banelings out here. No banelings speed, though, which could be a problem. Still has not started that with the lair. Okay, he's actually just going to push up here with the Hellbats. This is a pretty interesting timing push. He needs the Hellbats to absorb the Baneling hits, and it looks like they are, but so many links now spill down here. Coming uh, around and getting the big surround on all those Marines, going to force the big uh, liftoff there, but he actually does clean up the rest of the Banelings, and there's still a lot of Marines left. Oh, wow, that actually went better than I even realized. Yeah, he actually loaded enough up into the Metavax. Yeah. He can just stim and come forward here. Now, 1-1 one, one is finishing, but uh, a bit of an anti-defensive timing here as he's actually going to come in here, and there's no way for these drones to get away. Hellion's coming in as well. Zerg's going to lose a good third of his drone count and probably his third base as well. Yeah, he's going to lose all of these drones, and that third base is Dude, pretty much forfeit. This attack is pretty sick, man. Yeah. I, I wasn't quite... Remember I was mentioning the tanks earlier? Yeah. That was going to be effective? Yeah, it seems like he wants to go with this kind <laughs> of a, a tech here. Maru's back, man. Look at the splits. Even if he does get routed here, which it doesn't look like he will, uh, he... He just split all of his units into about five or six group against those banelings, and he's just not going to sustain any damage. I think maru has got this one. Yeah, I mean, it looks like this should be over, especially if he gets the baneling nest that's right down here, uh, or even gets these hellbats in front of the ramp since they can take out the oh, links yeah. pretty easily. Look at that, and being healed by the medevacs too. Okay, he's not even going to waste time trying to get tech structures. If he just gets up here to the next wave of drones, this game is G -G. over. GG. Sweet, Mara with a cool timing attack. That's something I would like to go back and take a look at again. I was, you know, I was a little bit confused at first because uh, I'm so used to seeing players go for a tank harass. But yeah, what he's doing is he's setting up for a hellbat timing. Yeah. Um, coming out there with just enough so that those hellbats soak up most of the damage, so the marines don't have to. Uh, also relying on the fact that the uh, you know, zerk does not have, for instance, mutalisks or anything like that. He yeah. can't pick up um, and, and be hit, shot down by the mutas. Uh, or anything else anti-air for that matter. So essentially, the Marines can endlessly avoid the Bailings while the Hellbats end up just, uh, you know, yeah. absorbing all that, and then it's a win from there. And the other problem was that the Lair was so late that Losir was just relying on having a ton of stuff, a ton of Banelings, a ton of links to deal with that, but because Maru delayed his third base for so long and just had a lot of his own stuff and that kind of Maru uh, splitting that we did see there and a the nice pickup, 
It just wasn't enough without Baneling Speed. He was not able to, in fact, defend off of three bases, as I had originally thought. Yeah, and he got in there and did the damage right before 1-1 one, one was done for Zerg. Yeah. Um, and, you know, once Zerg loses that bulk, I mean, we could talk about this for hours, honestly, about, you know, how Zerg gets dismantled. But uh, especially when you get into that, for instance, front base, even if the upgrade's just finished after the fight's done, the Zerg army is only good if it can meet up and be together. It's not like you spawn yeah. a few links here and they win a fight and a few links over there. They're just dis, uh, disjointed from each other. Also, when we saw the Hellbats get close to the ramp, that's basically yeah. checkmate. It's like getting tanks at the bottom of the ramp, I guess. Uh, a little bit less uh, dominating, but still a very well, nice the, position. The thing with the Hellbats is they actually can just stand there and block it off. I mean, the links actually yeah. can't even get and out. With the it's medivacs, crazy. Maru had like six medivacs by the end of that. They were just getting pretty much and unlimited heals the you, entire time. You know what else is cool is this explains why he gets the Viking after the first medevac, so the push yeah. is unexpected. He actually takes out all those overlords, it's pushes really cool. forward. Yeah, really smart stuff there uh, from Maru. I really like it. So we are going to go into SOS versus Zess. It's going to be a PvP, and this should be a really interesting one. Zest. I, I went with SOS on this. Um, yeah. Well, 